Hello, I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally. I hope you are well and uh, staying sane during this very trying time for all of us. I know back in the U.S. they're starting to get a little bit more serious about things, which I think is needed. And this is when you have to take action to protect yourself and your families, um, maybe even before the government tells you to do it. So in that mindset, um, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk with you about today. And you know, one of the things I used to hear in practice all the time was, man, my mom's dog lived to be 15 and she never took, the, took it to the vet. So why is that? Well, there's a couple of things. One is that we just didn't have all the garbage in the environment to deal with. And we also didn't do as much veterinary care back then as well. So when I'm saying my mom's dog because, uh, your mom's dog, because frankly, that's gonna be about my age for, for many of you. And for many of you like me, that's going to be, you know, your mom that was born back in the l late 30s, early 40s. And things were very different then. The way that we humans ate uh, was very different. And certainly our pets, they were eating what we did. So there's a couple of things I want you to be aware of. There are, uh, we can make things endlessly complex because the nature of the scientific mind is to define things into smaller and smaller and smaller categories. Uh, so when I finished veterinary school to give you some uh, clue about the sort of the ingrainedness of this, if you, as a veterinary student, uh, were asked by a professor, okay, this dog has vomiting and diarrhea and um, the gas sounds and discomfort starts at 3 o'clock in the morning and uh, three weeks ago he'd been swimming in stagnant water. If you could list out three differential diagnoses, meaning three possible causes of all those symptoms, our professors thought that we were adequate. If you could list out five, pretty good. If you could list out 10, you were a number one smart. So what does that mean to you, the pet owner, or to you, the patient, if you have to go into the human medical system? This is where testing becomes necessary to define the difference between what those potential causes are. So maybe your dog just ate garbage and it's got garbage can gut uh, or just plain old gastroenteritis. Maybe it has leptospirosis. Maybe it has several other parasitic diseases or blue-green algae toxicity. Who knows? So that was the thing. Is like if we could make smaller and smaller and smaller di distinctions, then we were rewarded uh, by our professors and told we were smart. So and that's all good because it really did change how medicine was offered to people and pets. We were able to do a better job, but that gets to be a problem when you're facing a chronic disease. What do you do? Uh, so there's a couple of, you know, and, it, and when you get told, well, it could be this and this and this and this, but it might be this and that and the other, um, that's a problem because it's really confusing for you, the pet owner. So I'd like to offer you a couple of good sources that I believe are going to give you accurate information um, as you start to research what's going on with your pets and also so that you are better armed uh, going into a conversation with your veterinarian. So the first one is the Merck Veterinary Manual. So this has been around for years and as veterinary students we laughed about it because uh, it was just so simple. But it's a great place to start for a lot of people and they really have updated it. Uh, so you know you can hit your search bar, uh, find out all sorts of stuff, um, you know all kinds of things that are out there for all the species that we live with, the horses, you know, the livestock, and then some of the uh, pocket pets or exotics, so to speak, as well as dogs and cats. The next place that's, and so what I'll do is put that into the comments here for you. 
Um, the next place you can look at that I feel is a, a fairly good place to start doing research is Veterinary Partner by VIN. And so this is going to be focused more on dogs and cats, but again, they've got uh, uh, information for all the animals that we live with and, and are in our lives. And so, you know, you can go here and check out information about medications and things, all the, you know, all sorts of great stuff. Um, so again, this is a great place to start doing some basic research. But remember, these two sites are uh, based in conventional medicine. So maybe that's not what you're looking for. So that's where I come in. What we've, uh, we've just spent the last two months rebuilding our uh, website, actually some courses, and um, I want to show you that today. So we've been focusing on building iPets Ally. So I'm going to sign in to my website here, and that's at drruthroberts.com. There's a couple of things you can do if you're already uh, Croc Pet Chef, you can sign in with your existing credentials. If you're not a member yet, you can click here and register for free, and I'm going to show you why that's kind of cool and groovy. Um, but there's several courses that I've developed over the years, and certainly um, one of them is the original Croc Pet Diet, and we've got two free courses. One is the Holistic Health, uh, Pet Health Protocols. Those are getting rebuilt at this moment. And then some free resources as far as helping to keep your pet mobile and things of that nature. But here's what I want to show you as iPets Ally. And what this is, is a collection of all of my videos uh, that I've ever made. And the awesome thing is that we've gotten transcripts made for all of them. Uh, the, the videos are now closed captioned and uh, it's just, I think it's really going to be wonderful for you. So the way we've set it up is that uh, all of this course content, so this is sort of the course and then these are the lessons, they're divided up by topic. So the original crock pet diet, healthy pet food, um, all of that good stuff, behavior, preventive care. So they're divided up by those topics. And then also I include my dosing instructions for uh, supplements that I really think are important for you as well. So that's all there. You click on them and it downloads. And then let me show you kind of what an average video setup looks like and Pep's helping me today. So here's our new crock pet diet cooking video, which we'll put into the crock pet course, so it's easy there. Um, but what you're gonna find on this site is that each of the videos are set up with a basic uh, description of what's in there, of the video itself, uh, and again, it's got YouTube uh, closed captioning on it. You can download the audio file here. You can download the transcript here. And then here's the actual transcript in the, um, in the text or the body of the page. The other thing that's really cool is that if you find you want um, to copy something so you can get to it easily, you can copy and paste and uh, add this to a note and then save it. And then, you know, you can, in your membership area, then you can go back to your notes and find, uh, find that very quickly and easily. So I am really excited about this. Um, the other thing is, is that it is split out by a topic and uh, you can actually search as well. So if we go up to, um, pop this a little bit bigger, um, you can see there's the search bar. Um, so you just type in, uh, say, cancer, hit enter. And what it's going to do is give you all sorts of stuff. Um, so the blog posts as well as all of the videos. So that's what I've got there for you. Um, the other thing that's really nice is that within all of this, uh, and this is one of our blog posts, 
um, within all of this, you can also go into what's called a focus mode. So if we're back looking at that uh, course, you can make it pop out so that you're just looking at the content there, which makes it a little bit easier to read, I think. So that's what I've got for you today. Um, take good care of yourselves. It's getting a little crazy out there. Uh, the other thing is, is that um, and I think I talked about this briefly last week, but la they, there was a case report of a dog in China testing positive for coronavirus. But there's been no evidence that pets can transmit the virus. Um, and so the dog and the dog never got sick and he was living with someone that was quite ill. So, you know, Take that with a grain of salt, stay safe, do your social distancing, take care of yourself and your family. And if you haven't started cooking for your pet, this is probably a great time because you're going to have a lot of time on your hands, I'm afraid. Uh, so check out the original Croc Pet Diet. If you haven't, iPets Ally subscription includes a um, access to the original Croc Pet Diet and for the upper level, also the uh, um, all of my uh, courses actually and uh, some other goodies as well so check that out there there's the landing page where you can get a little bit more information about it I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts your pet's ally and uh, for those of you that are in the crock pet community already I'll be heading over there in about 20 minutes and we'll uh, talk a little bit more about your questions and answers and that's the other part of iPets Ally is I'll be doing a weekly Q&A so that you can get your pet's health questions answered. Take good care and remember your pet's best health starts in the bowl.